Toyota Land Cruiser, Mercedes GLS, Infiniti QX80 and Mercedes G63. Plus long wheelbase Range Rover, BMW X7 and Lexus LX. Hi guys, I'm Diaz and you're watching the SQV Battle Channel. In this episode, we will find out which SUV has the most effective four-wheel drive system. And for this, I have specially found a new and quite complicated obstacle. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to find a Chevy Tahoe and Nissan Patrol to make the list of the participants maximally complete. But we will correct this drawback in the future for sure. And now, as per tradition, I must state a couple of things. The first one, to tell that this test is not fair because each car has different tires and different drivers. At second, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that yet, because in the next video, there will be a battle of the legendary off-roaders from 2000s, Nissan Pathfinder, Toyota 4Runner, and Jeep Grand Cherokee. Four obstacles, four vehicles, a very badass content. It's going to be very interesting. Well, let's get back to our contestants, and I am going to tell you how we set the order of driving of each car. The surface condition deteriorates after each attempt, so obviously it will be easier for the first participants. Therefore, we will start with the car which has the lowest torque, and then by ascending principle, we will finish with the most powerful car. The first participant is the 2020 Toyota Land Cruiser with a 4.6-liter gasoline V8 engine. Due to the difficulty of the obstacle, all participants will drive with preliminary activation of their off-road systems. Therefore, the driver of the Land Cruiser engaged the low range of the transmission, locked the central differential, and chose the mud and sand driving mode. The car drives to the first point of fixation where the rear wheel stretches out to almost the maximum of travel. A familiar body swing is a sign of the work of the braking system, which holds the spinning wheel so the loaded ones will receive more torque. As a result, the Land Cruiser copes with this obstacle. The next test, and now the front left wheel hangs out in the air. The diagonally located rear right wheel also has a minimal grip with the ground. For better understanding of the difficulty of this obstacle, please look at the rear left wheel. It spins being under pressure despite the toothy wheel tread. And by the way, the Toyota's traction control system brilliantly handles this obstacle and the car drives further. The last obstacle, another diagonal suspension, but the incline and lots of small rocks under the wheels complicate the situation. The Toyota stops to exclude the driving through the obstacle using the momentum. The engine revs up, a long wheel slipping with distinctive body swing, and the Land Cruiser finishes the drive. Look at the low rotation speed of the wheels and quite predictable behavior of the car. And now, the Toyota will drive the whole distance again, but with activation of the crawl control mode. The car stopped at the first obstacle, but with absolutely no sign of wheel slipping, confidently continued driving. And at the second fixation point, the electronic system of the Land Cruiser works miracles, especially in comparison to the previous attempt. The final point, the driver releases the brake pedal, and then everything is in the hands of the electronic system including the throttling. Some minor slipping due to the difficulty of the obstacle and under accompaniment of the braking system, working crawl control mode, the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 completes the drive. And the next contestant is a Mercedes GLS 450 with a 3.0 liter turbocharged gas engine. And as I mentioned before, all participants are driving with activation of off-road assistance. In this case, all we can do is to activate the off-road driving mode. Having not reached the main part of the first obstacle, the Mercedes stretches out its front left wheel. But at the same time, it doesn't make idle rotations. That's a good start.
And here is the first fixation point, which demonstrates the rear wheel travel range. The driver touched the gas pedal and a minor rotation of the unloaded wheels and the Mercedes securely drove forward and stopped at the next point with its front left wheel hanging high in the air. It's difficult to believe, but the GLS, standing on the slope on three wheels only, has easily coped with this obstacle. The final test, and there's no wonder too. A little wheel slipping because of small stones, and then the confident driving forward. An excellent result. But that's not all, especially for those who started doubting about the difficulty of the obstacle. The Mercedes will make another attempt, but this time in standard comfort mode. Do you remember how easily the GLS drove through this spot? Now it turned into a mission impossible. The driver steps on the gas, but the electronics doesn't allow the wheels to slip and the car is standing still. Therefore, now the driver switches off the ESP. More RPMs and more slipping, and this allows the car to drive on. And further, there is the first fixation point. The GLS drives through it with almost no stopping. The car is stopped with its front right wheel hanging, and then the Mercedes continues driving uphill, slipping even more than it was during the previous drive. The arrival to the final spot is also accompanied by the active wheel slipping. But after that, the GLS finishes the drive with almost zero idle wheel rotations. The next participant is the 2019 Lexus LX570 with a 5.7 liter gasoline V8 under the hood. Similarly to the Land Cruiser, the Lexus will drive with all off-road assistance activated. It means that the gearbox is in low range, central differential locked, and the air suspension is lifted at the highest position, and the drive mode is rock and dirt. The Lexus fully stopped at the first obstacle and then started driving and its unloaded wheels started rotating first, same to the Land Cruiser. Then we perfectly see the work of the traction control system. The Lexus slips with all wheels because of lack of the ground adhesion and drives to the next obstacle. The situation is analogical to the previous test. Some minor slipping of unloaded wheels at the very beginning, but then the Lexus confidently pushes forward thanks to electronic assistance. The final spot? Well, we don't see anything new here. The huge suspension travel allows reaching the ground and the traction control minimizes the idle wheel rotations. Now, the Lexus is going to make another drive. But if previously all off-road assistance and modes were activated, this time we will deactivate the central locking differential leaving the low range on and switching to the mud and sand mode. It is already visible that the Lexus's unloaded wheels make notably more idle rotations by arriving at the first fixation point. The car makes a full stop and then starts driving again. You can hear how the RPMs go up, the unloaded wheels are spinning, but nothing's happening. After all, the Lexus coped with this obstacle with only minor wheel slipping during the previous drive. Now, let's switch the driving mode from mud and sand to the rock and dirt. The wheels are slipping less, but it didn't change the overall situation. Now, let's try to give more RPMs. Have a look at the front left wheel. It twitches sharply at the peak moment, making the car's behavior less predictable. But from the other side, it helped the Lexus to cope with the first obstacle. And now, having arrived at the second spot, 
a long wheel spin, and then engagement of the traction control system, and the Lexus drives forward. The final test. Once again, we see an excellent articulation of the rear suspension, followed by the familiar scenario. Slipping of unloaded wheels and confident driving forward. I remind you one more time that this attempt was made in the low range of the gearbox, but without the central differential lock. The next participant is the Infiniti QX80, with a mighty 5.6-liter V8. Unlike the cross-platform Nissan Patrol, also known as Armada, which besides off-road modes, also is equipped with a rear locking differential, the Infiniti has only a low range in transmission. Therefore, the driver activates it and starts driving. At the first spot, the front right wheel falls into the pothole, lifting the rear left wheel up in the air, and the car makes a strange noise. The driver steps on the gas more at another diagonal suspension, and we once again hear that metal sound, but the Infiniti doesn't drive forward. Now, he tries to throttle more smoothly, keeping minimal RPMs. It is visible how the traction control system breaks the spinning wheels, but the Infiniti is still there. The driver smoothly revs up the engine, rocking the car's body. Accompanied by the roaring engine sound, it drives up to the second spot. To avoid excessive pressure on the vehicle, which may lead to hidden mechanical damages, it was decided to continue driving per less difficult line. Another demonstration of difficulty of this obstacle, the loaded rear wheel spins in the same place, but as soon as the driver increased the RPMs, the traction control system drove the Infiniti out of the pothole and the car continued climbing. The final test is easier than the previous ones, and that's why the Infiniti takes the standard line. The limited wheel travel is sufficient to sustain the contact with the ground, and thanks to the traction control system, almost at idle RPMs, the big Infiniti QX80 securely drives through this obstacle. The next participant is the long wheelbase 2020 Range Rover with a 5.0 liter supercharged V8. It has plenty of torque and purely road tires. Despite that, the Range Rover has the low range in transmission. We will imitate a situation maximally close to reality. The gearbox is in drive, the terrain response system is in auto mode, and the air suspension is in the highest position. Let's see what the Range Rover can demonstrate in these conditions, because nobody buys it exactly for the off-road qualities. At the first pothole, where the Mercedes got stuck in normal mode, the Range Rover's wheel hasn't even made a half spin when the electronics break it down. A very promising start. A full stop fixation at the first obstacle, and then the driver's smooth driving. The rear wheel makes one spin and then no idle rotations follow. Now, look at the front left wheel. While it has the adhesion to the ground, it rotates and helps to push the car uphill. But as soon as it goes up in the air, the resistance to rotation becomes less and that means that the opposite wheel on the same axle receives less torque. Therefore, the traction control system immediately squeezes the hanging wheel and the car sustains the driving pace even on three wheels. At the final spot, the Range Rover's position differs from other participants because of the longer wheelbase. But to a large extent, it doesn't affect the result. Next participant, the BMW X7 with a 4.4-liter twin-turbo gas V8 engine. The owner decided not to save and ordered it with the off-road package. This package not only adds the rear locking differential, but also allows selecting off-road driving modes. Of course, for more comprehensive comparison with the GLS 450, the BMW X7 with the 3.0-liter turbo engine and without the rear locking differential is required. But unfortunately, 
I couldn't find such a car for the test. And keeping in mind what cars I've managed to gather in this video, you bet I tried very hard. But unfortunately with no luck. Let's get back to the BMW's drive. Prior to starting, the driver selected the gravel mode and lifted up the air suspension at the maximally high position. The BMW's front wheel rotates notably more than the Range Rover's one and even more than the Mercedes in the off-road mode. Full stop fixation at the first obstacle and then start driving. The unloaded wheels make a slow rotation and by the increasing throttle, the car is driving forward. And despite the rear locker, the difference in rotation intensity of rear wheels is easily visible. The reason for that is that the electronics can vary the level of locking the differential depending on certain conditions. In the meantime, the X7 has fully stopped at the second obstacle, with its front left wheel lifted high. A little spin of the unloaded wheels, and the BMW has easily managed with this obstacle. But on the way to the final obstacle, the X7 had gone diagonal, and it drove it out only by raising up the engine's RPMs. Unfortunately, there's no footage from the car's dashboard available to understand how much exactly the driver stepped on the gas. The X7 slightly drove over the fixation spot at the last obstacle. Therefore, now the car rolls back. Look how the front wheel has lifted high. Perhaps here the car has taken a slightly different line. Same as the first obstacle. But from the other side, no other participant had the same. Therefore, most likely it is just the way the BMW suspension articulates. But nevertheless, the BMW confidently manages with this obstacle on three wheels, and we are driving on. The next participant is the Mercedes G63 on high-speed road tires. This car has been on my channel already in the video with Tesla, new Touring, and Toyota FJ Cruiser. I will leave the link to this video in the description or right now in the top right corner. During the first attempt, the G-Wagon will drive with the low range activated only. A minor wheel spin and the Mercedes fully stopped at the first spot, demonstrating an impressive rear suspension travel. The car keeps moving, the unloaded wheels make several rotations, and then the traction control system engages and eliminates any possible slipping. Look at the front right wheel to understand the seriousness of its intentions. At some moment, it just stops rotating, though other wheels are spinning and the vehicle is driving forward. There's a similar consequence at the second obstacle. At first, there's some insignificant slipping of unloaded wheels, and then the solo performance of the traction control system and Despite absolutely off-road useless road tires, the G-Wagon drives further. The final test, and once again, I want to underline the articulation of the G63 suspension. What a spectacular view of some wheels gone deep into arches and some stretched out still having some more travel. Let's watch how the G-Wagon will drive the obstacle course with low range and central locker activated. Surprised by active slipping of the unloaded wheels? Well, that was quite expectable. The activation of the central locking differential disables the traction control system. Therefore, let's take the next step. Activate the rear axle locker.
Now, it's an entirely different thing, but it is still a bit early to cheer. The G-Wagon reached the first obstacle and buried itself slipping with three wheels. Of course, one could reason this due to insufficiently grippy tires, but just a few minutes ago, the same car with the same tires effortlessly handled this obstacle. And that's all thanks to the traction control system. So, rigid mechanical locking differentials are not a panacea applicable for all cases, as many people tend to think, and this was a visual confirmation to it. In the meantime, the driver has activated the front locking differential. And now, when the maximum off-road potential of the G-Wagon is engaged, it drives like a tank, exactly where it is needed and when it is needed. And no diagonal suspensions can stop or slow down this beast. At the final test where all other participants, including this Mercedes, slipped more or less, the G63 with all differentials locked started driving just after touching the gas pedal with no sign of slipping. Now, let's imagine that you're filthy rich, you've got a G-Wagon, and you're nowhere near to off-roading. The only gearbox mode you use is drive position. This time, the G63 will make this attempt through the obstacle course exactly in this mode. All electronic systems are set in standard mode. Having reached the diagonal suspension, the Mercedes fully stops to avoid driving it using the momentum. The G63 starts driving. The unloaded wheels are slipping long while the traction control system breaks them to create more resistance for the loaded wheels. Another stop, and now the front left wheel is in the air. This time, the driver goes more RPMs and the traction control system does the job quicker. But nevertheless, the difference in the idle wheel rotations in comparison to the driving in low range is just colossal. It is once again very well visible at the final test. Basically, the fact that the Mercedes didn't fully stop at the fixation point doesn't anyhow affect the general result. Now, let's make short summaries per each car. The Toyota Land Cruiser 200 without cross-axle lockers coped with the test using the traction control system and huge suspension travel. I also would like to point out that the crawl control system, the work of which we've watched during the second drive. With this system activated, the unloaded wheels make less idle spins and the engine power is used more effectively, requiring more RPMs only in extremely difficult situations. The Mercedes GLS, a big premium crossover without low range and without an impressive suspension articulation too but it has a sufficiently effective off-road mode, and thanks to it, even an inexperienced driver can drive through a quite difficult obstacle. And unlike the Toyota Land Cruiser 200, where activation of the off-road assistance requires some certain consequence of actions, the Mercedes is much more simpler and doesn't demand any specific knowledge. The Land Cruiser fans and defenders might start commenting about the reliability and indestructibility of the vehicle. But I want to remind you that this video is about the comparison of all-wheel drive system performance and convenience of activation of the off-road assistance is an inseparable part of the process. The Lexus LX570 is constructively almost identical to the Land Cruiser 200. It also has a full-time four-wheel drive central locking differential, and no cross-axle lockers. That's why there is no wonder that the Lexus has demonstrated a nearly analogical result. With all off-road assistance activated, the traction control system deals with diagonal suspensions, without having the unloaded wheels making too many idle spins. During the second ride, the driver only activated the low range because the central locker is switched on by a separate button which wasn't done. And as a result, the LX570 wasn't even able to drive through the first obstacle. In such a situation, the drive modes will help the inexperienced driver. In this particular case, the selected mode was rock and dirt, 
and the Lexus actively slipping with its unloaded wheels was finally able to drive through the course of obstacles. The Infiniti QX80. Unlike its Japanese classmates, the QX80 is absolutely not designated for driving on such terrain. Besides absence of the central locking differential and off-road modes, the Infiniti has limited suspension travel, let alone the metallic banging from the transmission area during driving through the most complicated obstacles. It's a pity we weren't lucky to find the Nissan Patrol, which has everything for off-road that the Infiniti lacked. It would be very interesting to watch how it drives through all of our tests. But at least you know now one very compelling difference between the Infiniti QX80 and the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 and the Lexus LX570. The Range Rover, very powerful engine and lightning reaction of the traction control system do not require any additional actions from the driver and allow effortlessly managing very challenging obstacles and you have just witnessed that. Plus, the Range Rover also has the low-range, off-road cruise control and electronically controlled central and rear differentials. That all rises up its capabilities at a very high level. The BMW X7. Based on experience from previous videos, the BMW's all-wheel drive system brilliantly completes its tasks. This X7 was no exclusion Plus, it has a huge torque reserve and off-road package, including the rear locking differential. That's why, during diagonal suspensions, the BMW didn't have any idle spins of unloaded wheels, unlike the Mercedes. It is also worth noting that the BMW driver very gradually raised the RPMs, while the Mercedes' first impulse was sharper with well-visible slipping of the unloaded wheels. It is interesting how an X7 with a 3.0-liter engine without the off-road package would drive through these obstacles. I will definitely check it out as soon as such a possibility occurs. The Mercedes G63 finalizes the list of today's participants. Having obtained sports cars dynamic at the same time, it hasn't lost its off-road capabilities. And, as you can make sure, the G63's advanced traction control system in some certain situations is even more effective than combination of locked central and rear differentials. At the same time, with the low range activated, all three differentials locked, having an outstanding geometric parameters and a huge suspension travel, the Jalanda wagon drives like a tank even through extremely complicated terrain. All it needs is a sufficient tire grip. And now, the traditional awarding of places. The outsider of this test is the Infiniti QX80. Unlike other participants, this car is the least prepared for driving through difficult obstacles. The fourth place is occupied by the Toyota Land Cruiser 200 and the Lexus LX570. These two are powerful frame-based off-roaders with a record-level suspension articulation. But if to talk exactly about their four-wheel drive system work, then it is not the most prompt one. And don't forget that the fact that the driver should have certain knowledge to achieve the maximal effectiveness of the four-wheel drive system, what to activate and in what order. The Mercedes GLS is in third place. It's that case when the all-wheel drive system of the crossover works better than the one of the legendary off-roaders. And it doesn't matter who's behind the steering wheel, an experienced driver or a fresh driving school graduate. The second place is awarded to the BMW X7. With rear locking differential and a more powerful engine than the Mercedes GLS's one, the X7 drove through all obstacles more delicately, almost not allowing idle spins of the unloaded wheels. Predicting blames about lobbying the interests of the BMW, let me remind you that this is an evaluation of exactly the effectiveness of the all-wheel drive system work. In this case, the BMW has an inarguable advantage in technical equipment and hence is the obvious better result. The first place is shared by the Range Rover and the Mercedes G63. The Range Rover demonstrated an exemplary work of a traction control system even in standard mode, unlike any other participant. And, though the electronics of the Geldenwagen is not that prompt, 
It is the only one that is equipped by three locking differentials from the manufacturer, which turns the G63 into a tank on wheels. In the future, we will surely test the capabilities of the old and new Gelden wagon, not forgetting to add the new Defender and Wrangler Rubicon for company. That's all for me. Please let me know in the comment section below what car was a surprise for you and from which one you expected more. My name is Dias. See you in the next video.